Hi there, Jamie Good here. I'm going to be talking about the practice of rating wines and more specifically the 100 point scale for rating wines. And I've got five points I'd like to make fairly briefly about the 100 point scale for rating wines. And I'm aided in this practice with a glass of rather fine Pinot Noir from the Sonoma Coast in California. My first point about the 100 point scale is that I think it's a bit silly. I think it's a bit daft, really. Um, I'm enjoying this wine, but I can tell you how much I enjoy it. But to put a, a point score on it, to say this is 93, 94 points, just seems slightly absurd. And I guess we've been so used to doing this for so long that we forget how nuts it must seem to the rest of the world. My second point is that a score um, is not a property of a wine, but that's how most people see it. They say this is a 94 point wine. So that score is seen as a property of the wine, when in truth it's a result of the interaction between me, the taster, and this glass of wine. Now I bring to this wine drinking or tasting experience um, my own context, my previous history, my expectations, um, my prejudices. I bring those to the, the whole experience and, um, and even what day it is, the context I'm in drinking in, all of those will shape my interaction with that wine. And so I think it's fairer to see the property, the score, not as a property of the wine, but as a property of the interaction between me and the wine, in which, an interaction in which I'm playing a, a significant part. My third point, a um, 100 point scale implies a precision that simply isn't there. Um, I don't think, I think it's, it's, it adds to the, the craziness of the whole use of the 100 point scoring system to, to have it tied down to a one point in 100. So that's another problem for me. Fourth, um, 95 is the new 90. Um, scores have inflated at the top end. I remember when I first started um, drinking wine seriously, um, in earnestness, I guess in the, the mid-90s, um, one of the references for me was Robert Parker's Guide with its scores for the wines. And I find those scores quite useful. They helped to steer me towards wines that I thought were going to be better. But then a, a wine that was 86 points and then had the A, was in the cheaper bracket of rating, was actually quite a good wine. Nowadays, 86 points would be like a major fail for a wine. Um, the scores have crept upwards, and I think part of the problem is the pressure from all these different critics um, to be the ones who are quoted um, by media sources. So if their scores are higher, then it's more likely they'd be quoted, and wineries will quote them, um, wine shops will quote them, and it builds the, the brand. And so that there's a subtle upwards pressure on scores. You don't want to be the guy who's coming in low. And there's recently, on Facebook, an Argentinian producer um, went into a mad, crazy tirade against an American critic who had scored his wines 88 and 89, full of expletives. Um, now, 88 and 89 used to be quite good scores. Nowadays, it's failure, it's disaster. If you only get 88 points for your wine, you failed. And there's something wrong with that. So this this um, score inflation has pushed scores into an ever ever higher bracket. Now for a decent wine, especially with some of the Australian critics, unfortunately are kind of the worst culprits here. Um, a good quality um, commercial Australian wine will get 90 points. Uh, a really, really good Australian wine, but still a commercial quality wine might get 95, leaving you very few points to play with for the top wines. And also I'm, I'm not keen on the 100 points wine, the idea of giving a wine a, a perfect score, because I don't think that any wine's perfect. So philosophically, I will never give 100 points on a wine. Um, I intend to keep that. But this upward creep in scores has left us in this fairly ludicrous situation, um, where um, most wines are going to be one or two points away from each other. And it's nuts, it's balmy, but that's the way it is. My fifth point is we hate the 100 point scale. Well, I know most of my colleagues do, but we're kind of forced to use it because the serious um, critics who paved the way, Parker and The Spectator, um, popularised the 100 point scale. And now to use any other scale would, would, would not register with the majority of consumers. And actually, scoring is quite useful. Um, I hate it, but I do it um, because tasting notes are so difficult to write there you know our vocabulary for tastes and smells of wines is impoverished 
it's very difficult to describe you know, this wine that I'm drinking now in meaningful terms in a way that enables you to see well did I really really like it or just like it and those guys who just use the tasting notes without the scores sometimes it's very hard to know exactly how much they like the wine and that's a problem I think when you're reading through uh, a list of descriptions of 30 wines um, if there's no scores it's very hard to d discriminate you know which ones did they like best and when I use 100 point scale I'm, I don't think it's magical I just think that um, I'm using a shorthand, a number, to try and help you see on my sort of rating scale whether I really, really like the wine or whether I just liked it a bit. And I hope that that's clear from the, the, the notes and the scores together. But most tasting notes suck, they're really bad, and mine probably suck as well. Um, a tasting note is a very unsatisfying way of conveying um, a, this sensory experience of enjoying a really good wine like this. So, my parting comments, I think the 100 point scale really sucks, it's horrible, it's nasty, it's childish, and we shouldn't really be using it, but we do, simply because that's become the de facto way of assessing wines in the fine wine community. And will it change? I don't know. I can't change it, I'm not powerful enough. Could a consortium of wine writers change it? I don't know. Um, what I know is that it's, it's helpful to have some sort of way of discriminating amongst the many, many hundreds and thousands of wines we rate every year. Um, tasting notes alone don't seem to work very well. Um, it would be lovely to come up with an alternative scale that actually used, you know, used more of the scale. I mean, when I did my degree, if you got seventy out of, if you got a seventy percent score, so seventy out of a hundred, you would get a first class degree because the whole of the scale was used. Um, with the 100 point scale, um, only a very small portion of the scale is used, so there's less discriminatory power. Um, so I think some alternative scale at some stage would be great, because at the moment we're heading into trouble, because very soon it's going to be a binary scale, but for fine wines it's going to be 99 points or 100 points, because we'll have run out of room, um, which is kind of ludicrous. Anyway, thanks. If you've listened this far, thank you very much for your attention. Cheers. <laughs>